Hello and welcome to the Mutual Fund Show. I'm Nidhar Chow. In the next 20 minutes, we'll try and talk about what should you as an investor do if all the developments over the last uh, 10, 12 odd days um, are, are unnerving you or making you think about the strategy that you've had thus far. Should there be a change in strategy? Uh, should there be a continuation of the same strategy? Uh, could there be tactical calls made, even on the MF side? I think all of those questions, and of course, uh, what are the kind of funds that are to be invested into now that uh, there is some bit of there are some bit of developments uh, on the Russia Ukraine front as well? Well, to talk about that, uh, two experts. Uh, they need no introduction. They've been on the show a number of times. Raga Vayengar and Saloni Sangvi join in uh, to talk about their thoughts. Both of you, thank you so much for taking the time out and speaking with us today. Uh, and hope all thank is you. safe. Ragav, uh, thank you. Can I uh, actually, Saloni? Let me start with you. Um, Belated Happy Women's Day, for whatever it's worth. It's a bit late. <laughs> thank you, Neeraj. Okay. So, so thank many, you for uh, having me on the show. No, no, the pleasure is ours. Uh, how have you thought about uh, this? I mean, what should an average uh, client of yours who's investing purely in mutual funds uh, do when it comes to uh, mutual funds, especially in light of all the recent developments? So uh, Neeraj, actually, historically, if you see, we've seen a lot of uh, geopolitical events, um, you know, world wars, Gulf War, 9-11, crisis like the COVID pandemic, etc. And what we've seen is in the short term, uh, markets are volatile. It's very difficult to predict how the markets will react in the short term. I mean, I don't think many people saw the bull run or we saw post the COVID pandemic, right? But when you zoom out and take a longer term view, uh, the entire picture changes. So, uh, you know, one year after most of these crises, it seems like the market has forgotten that there was any such crisis. Now, for most investors, it's very easy to get influenced by all the no noise around. Uh, I would recommend that, you know, you kind of stick to your asset allocation based on your risk taking ability and your goals. Uh, now, for most people, that is easier said than done, and it's very difficult to kind of close out all the noise. Uh, so in case if that is something that's difficult or in case if you lack discipline, um, you know, to rebalance your portfolio as need be, dynamic asset allocation funds uh, can help you navigate the market volatility and rebalance better by entirely removing biases, uh, you know, from the equation. In this, um, I think uh, the Edelweiss uh, Balanced Advantage Fund uh, is a good option. It uh, basically, you know, the strategy that they follow is a trend following strategy. Uh, and it looks at a variety of factors like moving average trend health to determine the equity allocation. So if the market is rallying, the upward momentum uh, will likely carry the markets up further. And it's actually tr tracked and rebalanced daily. So currently, I think its equity level is at about 38%. And, um, you know, over a longer term, if you look at the last five years performance, it has delivered about 12% versus 8% um, for the category at okay. lower levels of risk, essentially. Okay. Okay. We'll talk about this in greater detail as well, Saloni, but thanks for starting off uh, the piece with that, Raghav. Um, thanks for joining in as well. And to you too, actually, the first primer question is this. To, for everybody's mind, front and center, um, it is the Russia-Ukraine conflict. How should people approach this, to your mind? Investors, mutual fund investors, that is. I think, let's face it, Neeraj, I think this the month of February and March are turning out to be quite unique. Uh, you know, two years back, we had the pandemic. Uh, once in a hundred year phenomenon, the last time we had it was in 1915. I think in the last 75 odd years since World War II, we've never had a great power fighting another war. We've had a lot of wars, but not a great power. So I'd like to start by saying that the situation, like many people, many more eminent people before me have said, is reasonably complicated. Uh, obviously, the the uh, the impact is felt uh, immediately. You are noticing oil price increases, commodity increases, all that is happening. So I think one thing which is very clear is that people have to brace themselves for higher inflation across the curve right uh, so i think that's number one so i think for people who have been a bit of a spendthrift in the last two three years because inflation has pretty much been in good control uh, especially in the last five years i think you have to really take a strong hard look at all your expenses coming to mutual funds i think uh, uh, saloni said it rightly i think many of these events look very different about a year down the road 
this one will have longer term ramifications to our mind so i don't want to make an immediate assumption but yes valuations are looking far more attractive today than what they were let's say 3 6 months back number 2 i think retail investors were in a bit of a euphoric stage you know too much of money flowing into ipos ipo listing gains pop gains all that i think that all story is in that sense is slightly over now so i think today i would suggest that if you are a novice investor you are coming in for the first time a little worried stick to balanced advantage funds there are a lot of them available in the market there's access balanced advantage everybody has them everybody has their own model so everyone has their style of managing i think the key thing to look out you know is very fortuitous we discussed it uh, you know over the last 6 7 months that i've been fortunate to be on your show we basically talked a lot about hybrid and really avoided the strong equity category so people who you know sort of followed your show and sort of followed your advice i think they would be seeing much lesser losses today on their portfolio than maybe some other investors so that way kudos to you neeraj i think you you brought the right category front and center almost 8 9 months back and uh, i i keep telling people on balanced advantage small correction then raghav followed yes. my show and followed your advice yeah. <laughs> now we can continue <laughs> yeah so i think i think the key thing on bab funds as i keep telling my investors is it's not a it's not an alpha fund it's a fund that you should look at how that particular scheme has done when the markets have done have fallen and if you can see that over a period of time and that will give you an idea as to whether a fund is living up to mandate or not uh, so yeah but if you are a if you are a reasonably seasoned investor and you've been sitting on the side waiting for valuation corrections i think that time has come now so you could possibly look at your internal equity allocations talk to your financial partner and then maybe up your equity allocations now how to do that is interesting uh, many people i have seen huge appetite uh, or rather huge flows come in especially into access uh, the days the markets have fallen in two four figures 1000 1500 points so many people like to buy the dip right and uh, uh, there are some people who have a more systematic approach to it so there's stp is available uh, you just put it away mechanically and forget about it uh, both are fine to my mind one needs you to be a bit more proactive watchful one is in some sense autopilot so again depending on what your day job is whether you have the ability to do that uh, have a look at that and just 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 uh, just look at that and you know allocate automatically according to that yeah. that's right got it um raghav can i ask you a follow up question it seems from your answer that you are recommending buying the dip now my question largely was that buying the dip usually is worked uh, for a lot of investors who've joined in the market in the last two years it's always worked so for them that's gospel uh yeah, yeah. would it necessarily be the right strategy considering that 2022 is not just about the russia ukraine conflict that's actually a very recent phenomenon what 2023 is about is probably higher commodity costs higher inflation higher interest rates and yeah. maybe lower multiples so is Absolutely. buying the dip necessarily the right idea uh, or or should people what the point i'm trying to drive home is should people do a lump sum here or should should people do a systematic transfer plan of sorts simply because um, there may be uh, possibilities of the markets meandering and maybe having corrective phases through the rest of the year as well I think it's a it's a very very valid question because like I pointed out we are in very uncharted territory today. We are seeing the first time a great power having a war on a much smaller country. So where this will go, frankly, is anybody's guess at this point of time. Uh, so yes, in that sense, having a more systematic approach and a more longer term buy policy is good. I like buying dips, uh, Neeraj, because of the fact that, and I think buying dips, uh, I will only put one caveat to it: buy quality stuff around dips. Uh, if you buy, I mean, just because a stock. or a mutual fund that you're buying has just fallen 15 20 30% don't do that i mean make sure that what you're buying is something that you like to hold on to for a longer period of time so you're essentially essentially you have it's it's like going to a supermarket or a or to a luxury store uh, maybe 6 months back uh, liking an item uh, and then not very clear whether you want to buy it then coming back 3 months later and saying hey there's a 25% sale now will you buy that item again i think that's the question that you have to ask yourself uh, many people don't do that people get carried away by trends and people get carried away by uh, some flashes that they get through various parts of the media whatsapp university etc etc and say hey this stock is down 30% or this fund is down 40% and i think that's not the right approach to do it but yeah it's it's buying on dips has been generally profitable like you said over the last two years but it's a good entry level point and more importantly neeraj i think investors want to feel in control of their investments now this is all damn good for people who are diy investors but uh, there are many people i think uh, if you're fortunate to have a financial partner with you i think you should consult them 
and more importantly, then take that call whether you should buy a dip or buy an SDP. I think they would have a much better, uh, much better idea on your personal finances. Yeah. Well, I consult Saloni Sangvi, and she's with us on the show. So let me ask her, Great. Saloni, uh, what's your sense about whether buying the dip is the right strategy? Uh, well, I wouldn't say always because there's nothing into perpetuity, but especially in a year like 2022. Thank you, Neeraj. Um, I think as you correctly pointed out, this year is not just about Russia, Ukraine, but there are multiple events that we will see going forth that will make at least the first six months very volatile, if not the entire year. Uh, I think you have to be very careful when you're trying to time the market because, um, you know, while buying the dip can be a good strategy, it can also be like catching a falling knife because just because the markets are down 10, 15 percent uh, doesn't mean that they can't go down further from those levels. And for a lot of people who've entered the, uh, you know, the markets in the last couple of years, they've broadly seen just a large up move and have not really seen a major correction. Um, that being said, I think for a lot of investors, uh, being vigilant on rebalancing uh, also would actually help because say, for example, markets are down like they have been now. Uh, automatically, your equity exposure reduces and your debt exposure increases. So when you rebalance it, you're automatically investing more into equity and taking money off debt. Uh, the same thing actually works uh, when the markets have gone up substantially and, you know, your um, asset allocation, again, bears in favor of debt. So I think even following a simple strategy like that uh, will help you kind of take advantage of, uh, you know, sharp up or down moves in uh, the markets as well. Okay. Great. Now, uh, you know, we're going to come back at, towards the end of the show with some ideas for each of you who want to invest into mutual funds currently, um, both from the access table as well as independently from Saloni. But first, let me get in Raghav to talk about um, some uh, some thesis which people would say they are that there are investment myths. Some people would say these are not myths, but these are actually investing principles for them. Uh, out of the five or six that the Access team had exchanged with me, I chose three of them, which I thought were probably very pertinent. Raghav, uh, no right time to enter the market and redeem only when you want the money for end use or quality over anything else or asset allocation key differentiator. Can you talk yeah. about these and yeah. do you call them myths? Do you call them your investing principles or do you believe they're a combination of both? No, no, they are fundamentally block buster block letter investment principles for us at access Invest. all three uh, so asset allocation is super super important i think given the kind of uh, investment avenues that we have today i think yes apart from debt equity you also have some gold now so if you can look at you know multi-asset funds from that perspective very very good idea uh, quality has always been topmost on our mind because then you're not really worried about you may get to buy it a little more expensive, but you're not really worried about the long-term prospects of that. And if you are an equity investor and your long-term goal is to make wealth and have a reasonably smooth journey, I think quality is possibly the number one principle. Mm -hmm. And and the first one, I'm sorry, I, I just missed that out. Which is the first one you said? The, uh, yeah, no. So I was the, asking about whether there is no right time to enter the market oh, yeah, and yeah, redemption uh, should only be done when one wants the money for end use. Yes, absolutely. So I would reframe that by just saying that I think when you're investing, have a goal in mind. I think the best thing to do is to have a, I mean, sit down with your financial partner, list out your financial goals, make sure you're adequately saving enough in the right assets for that. And then obviously, I think, uh, I don't think anybody in the industry or I think it, it, I think it's, I don't think even an expert Neeraj really knows when the market is at top or at bottom. Right. Uh, sure. If somebody had told me January 1st that we had a we would have a shooting war in the middle of Europe uh, with so many casualties and all the rest of the economic turmoil. I would have said maybe you had something extra to drink along with your tea in the morning. So I don't think people have really figured that out. And I, I think so. I think the key thing for me is to be uh, the time in the market is much, much more important than timing the market. Timing the market, sure. Yeah. So, so that, Raghav, that for me is a fundamental statement, actually. Yeah. Okay. So from purely from a mutual fund investor's perspective, somebody is not investing into stocks, right? and is only using the mutual fund route, when you say, I presume you prescribe by the theory of asset allocation being the key differentiator, would you therefore say that in order to have a balanced portfolio, 
a multi asset fund or larger exposure to multi asset funds might be a prudent strategy for an investor uh, see again this is something reasonably individualistic neither so if you are as i said as you said lucky to have a good financial partner you can do it independently using a combination of debt equity mm. gold and now of course you've got the new kids on the block thanks to regulator being the silver funds so if you can manage that and you're disciplined enough to listen to them and more importantly execute what they say great if you can't uh, you, you, your day job doesn't allow you to be as proactive as that then yes a multi asset fund you leave it to the fund manager or the, the fund house and let them take whatever call they can within the ambit of the offer document but uh, yeah both are both are it's just different vehicles to reach the same destination hmm okay so let me can i can i bring you in on this uh, two key points and again i don't know if there's a myth for you or it's an investing principle for you or, or each of these but purely from a mutual fund investors perspective uh, quality over anything else and asset allocation being a key differentiator now i know axis amc swears by quality as being their guiding light there are some factor funds a dsp quant fund for example that i know uses quality as a key benchmark differentiator for their stock choosing so is quality or anything else a prudent way according to you to choose mutual funds and kind of opt for those kind of funds or would you believe um, it's not necessarily uh, their only yardstick um i think quality has actually been in the spotlight a lot uh, in recent times um and as you mentioned there are only a handful of funds that actually follow a purely quality uh, quality approach Uh, I differ slightly. Uh, I think with Raghav on this. Um, while I think quality is an important factor, uh, different factors do well at different points in time. You know, for example, value was the best performing fund in say two thousand nine to ten. Alpha was the best performing fund in the last two years, etc. So um, I think ideally a fund that uses a multi-factor strategy. Uh, approach rather than focusing on uh, you know one particular factor would be a better way of investing for most investors okay, okay. and 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 I, i reckon you you concur with the asset quality part or asset allocation part kind of try and do it whether you do it with the help of an advisor and split it up into different kind of funds or choose funds which are spreading their eggs over multiple assets as opposed to only equity is that a prudent uh, strategy for somebody who's only looking at mutual funds Uh, I completely agree with Raghav on this point. Ninety um, percent of your returns are actually determined by your asset allocation. Uh, so for those who can, uh, as he mentioned, do it themselves, split it up based on their goal and risk profile. Uh, that's the ideal way to go about it. But as we know, practically that is not something in reality a lot of people follow or do. So in absence of that, a balanced advantage fund or a multi-asset fund can be a great way of, um, you know, getting exposure to different assets without having to put in a lot of time or, you know, trying to monitor and rebalance when needed. Got it. Now, uh, Raghav, my final question to you, and then my final question to Saloni. Uh, first to you. Uh, now, you guys have a bunch of funds out there, right? And there is probably no. one size fits all but assume some hypothesis that the 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 viewer who is watching this is between let's say 30 and 50 uh, both male and female kind of viewers watch this um, they are mid income reasonably well earning people in their own right and if they have to make mutual fund allocations at the current point of time looking at what's happened in the last two months hypothesizing what could happen over the next 10 uh, or next uh, you know 22 months whatever if you take a two year view what are the kind of funds from the axis stable that you believe are best suited for a well diversified portfolio i think all axis funds are well diversified neeraj so i don't i don't worry about that it's just that it depends on the risk appetite and the time uh, i mean this is a public show so i would actually you need to give me more data on the investor but let's say if the investor has a uh, let's say 3 year to maybe 5 year type horizon maybe a balanced advantage fund is a better place to be in uh, if he's got a 5 year to 7 year time horizon or 5 year plus i think a blue chip is fine blue chip flexi cap it's slightly more than that i think anything between a multi cap mid cap or even a small cap is fine I mean, small cap obviously i'll give a little more time more give it maybe 8 9 years more because for two reasons i think you need to get the the story right you need to get allow stocks to perform uh, intrinsically get their valuation and then obviously the price follows 
yeah. last year of course if people are fond of uh, passive management i think there's a whole host of good index funds available with us we have a mid cap 50 which we are launching on monday we have a small cap 50 which closed yesterday these are these are index funds with a little bit of quality and liquidity that we put in and then of course my hot favorite the nifty 100 and the nifty next 50 are always always there available to you so it's again a mix neelan and uh, lastly don't let's not forget debt because uh, i think that is also a nice place at this point of time yes it's a little scary given the crude and the inflation and all the other things but it's it's a great asset class to be in when things are a little hazy out there especially for the very short to medium term so anything less than a year i would say put some combination of debt into because one it allows you to take advantage of market falls like what's happened in the last 15 20 days number two if you look at your overall asset allocation debt does give you a bit of a cushion uh, and i think that's important from a individual investor perspective mm. okay raghav just quick follow up this is a strategy for all times or or do you believe the current current volatility and the current uncertainty demands that there should be some changes to this approach no i'm 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 reasonably okay neeraj i think it's not okay. it's 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 all right i mean if let's say we were in 2013 14 maybe i would have put a little more emphasis on the mid cap and the small cap space if with those kind of valuations given the current valuation move in the last especially last couple of years i would that's why i'm giving a slightly longer time horizon uh, maybe if we were in different circumstances my timing would have been a little off i would have possibly if i had the benefit of uh, lower valuations i would have possibly put a slightly lower timeline to but to my mind neeraj i think the best and we've discussed this at infinitum the best uh, the best timeline is actually forever so unless you really need the money let's not get into playing this stock uh, you know or this mutual fund flipping game you sell something today get it out tomorrow and stuff unless you have a really good requirement or your financial planner or partner advises you that you possibly too heavy on equity or too heavy on debt and make those allocations that's the best thing to do uh, i think people Got just uh, and i think the digital world unfortunately allows you to do this very very rapidly without realizing and you will not realize that impact today you realize 10 years later that hey that was maybe a mistake but you lost that time uh, so that's my advice to just stay invested don't worry about it these things will happen obviously this situation is a little more serious than in the past but leave it to the professionals hopefully they'll they've navigated this before hopefully they'll do it again yeah fair call thanks raghav i really appreciate you joining us today and giving us your thoughts you. much appreciate your thank time you. thank you so much neil bye bye yeah. great and and saloni i'll ask the same question to you uh you kind of gave us a flavor of one of the funds that you like but looking at the current circumstances what is uh, and again i can't tailor fit this i can't give you one individual or or a set of individuals age bracket profile so just hypothesize a few or come out with an average plan if you will uh, which could be uh, suited for most people what are the kind of funds that people should look at so um i concur with raghav in terms of if we're taking a longer term view um you know in terms of the categories that he mentioned uh again because markets have run up a lot in the last few years uh you know we have to give equity a little bit a slightly longer term uh, time frame um i think if we're looking at a more short term uh, tactical call i think gold is definitely a good hedge to have right now um in because of the uncertain times that we will see going forward this year and um i think for investors who are extremely aggressive can um you know take advantage of the supply side constraints uh, and rising commodity prices a uh, war often increases commodity prices and added to that as we're becoming more digital we're moving to electric vehicles etc uh we would need a larger supply of metals uh, than is being currently uh, used so uh, an, an investor who wants to be extremely aggressive uh and for a shorter period of time uh can make a tactical investment uh, in a commodities fund like uh, maybe the icsi prudential commodities fund this invest largely in metals energy construction um and chemicals now of course this is a high risk investment so um again anyone who's looking at it please exercise caution and it's only for those who want to make a tactical call and be aggressive um in their investment Uh, for a longer term, for someone who is a novice, uh, again, as I mentioned, the Edelweiss Balanced Advantage Fund uh, is a good bet. Uh, now, for someone who is looking for something uh, a three to five year horizon, ideally, maybe you can look at either an index fund or a flexi cap fund. 
and for someone who's looking for a five plus year horizon can maybe look at mid cap space right now uh barring that yeah i think gold is again definitely i'd like to retrace something that you know can be added at this point because we i see the uncertainty will continue into the year and it's a good hedge for times like Great. That's 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 a comprehensive answer. All right. Saloni, thank you so much uh, for doing that. And thanks so much for taking the time out and being with us today on the Mutual Fund Show. Thank you so much, Neeraj, for having me. Our pleasure was ours. And viewers, thanks for tuning in uh, to this edition of the MF Show.